this, we have our remainder theorem. And what the remainder theorem says is a remainder theorem, if x minus k divides evenly into f of x, then r equals f of k, right? Now remember, they just said f of x minus k is, is a factor. That's how we write a factor. And we know that all factors, the reason why we call them factors is because we factor it, so we have a factor times a factor times a factor equals zero, right? And then we can find all the zeros. So if I have this x minus k as a factor, I know I can set it equal to zero, add k to both sides, and say um, x equals k, right? And that would be my zero. So k is my zero. Does that make sense? And what do we do when we do synthetic division? We're worried about what using the zero, right? So here, I already tell you that k is 2. So therefore, k is my what? My zero, though, right? And you could say the factor would be x minus 2. All right. But anyways, I don't know if this is a zero, though, yet. It just says the value of k is 2. I will be able to tell if this is a zero. Do you know why? How can I be able to tell? How would I be able to show that this is a zero? What needs to happen if this is a zero? I'm going to use synthetic division. And when I do synthetic division, I need to see something to show that this is going to be a zero. The remainder is going to be zero, right? Because if the remainder is zero, that means this zero's factor evenly divides into the polynomial. Alright, so let's go and do it. Two. Now we take the coefficients, right? One, negative three, two, negative four. So I'm going to work this through a little bit quicker because synthetic division is not the main purpose of the video. Bring down the one. One times two is two. Negative three plus two is negative one. Negative one times two is negative two. Two times negative two is or two plus negative two is zero. Zero times two is zero. Negative four. Uh oh, we got a remainder, right? So therefore, it's well, it's not a zero, right? K equals two is not a zero, meaning the factor x minus two does not evenly divide into this polynomial. But that's okay. That's not what I'm trying to show you guys. So we could say here's the remainder, constant, linear, and quadratic. All right. But what I'm here to show you guys is. Our r is equal to negative 4. Yes? Now, let's go back up to this remainder theorem and see what this says. The remainder theorem says if x minus k divides into, it doesn't say it has to divide into evenly, it just says if it divides into it. So this divides into this number, right? We can divide 2, our fact, we can divide x minus 2, right? That's a 0, then the factor is x minus 2. We can divide x minus 2 by using synthetic division of the 0 but we get a remainder. But then what it says is our remainder equals f of k. Well, let me go back and remind you guys of something. If I say f of 4, what do I do with the 4 in that problem? You do what? You plug, you plug it in for the x, right? You evaluate for that input value. So. Here, I have f of k. What would I do with the k? Change it. Oops. Change it. Well, well first, what, what would I do with the k? So here's my function. So I have f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. And if I wanted to find f of k, what would I do? Put the k in for x. However, do I know what k is in this problem? k is what? 2. two. So what am I going to do with the 2? Put it in for x. Now let's go and see something. 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is negative 12. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 4. So when you add this all up, f of 2 equals negative 4. So one thing I want you guys to understand is if you do synthetic division, all right, whatever your 0 is, if you evaluate the polynomial for that 0, you're going to get the remainder to be exactly the same. So this is helpful in one of two ways. One, you can always verify, like on your test, I'll ask you to verify the remainder by using the remainder theorem. Meaning, I'll expect you to show me that it is a that you can prove it two different ways. 
The other way that's um, helpful with this is, well, one, you can, it's very cool. Sometimes you might have a function that's very easy just to see if it's a zero or not. You just plug it in. If you get your remainder zero, then you know it's a, if you plug it in, you know it, that it's a, and you get zero, then you know the, if you, if you plug it in and you get zero, then you know the remainder is zero, so therefore the function is a zero of the function. Okay? So that's it with that.